Hi, I'm Jared Holliday, a computer engineering student at the University of Cincinnati, and this is the model roller coaster I've been working on with the College of Engineering, Applied Science, and Rockwell Automation. Before we get into a full tour, I'd love to give you guys a little background information on the model. Roller coasters have always been a passion of mine, and from an early age, I spent my free time building models of them. It was through this that I discovered my favorite parts of roller coasters were the electrical control system. Many educators find roller coasters to be a great demonstration of physics, which is certainly true, but they miss the amazing technology behind the ride. I focused my models on the computer system instead of the physics and found over time that students were able to easily relate to the idea of computer controls when they were implemented on a model roller coaster. In my latter years of high school and early years of college, I started taking the model roller coasters I built to STEM education events across the Cincinnati area. The goal of the models was to create a way to show the application of computer controls in a way that would inspire students to go and explore opportunities in STEM related fields. As an added benefit, it also helped me gain experience to achieve my dream of working with computer control systems on real roller coasters. Each iteration of my model roller coasters got more and more complex and used closer and closer to the same equipment that was being used on real roller coasters. So when Jason Heil at the University of Cincinnati approached me after seeing one of my earlier model roller coasters and asked if I could build my next generation model roller coaster for the University of Cincinnati with help from Rockwell Automation as my senior design project, I honestly couldn't say no. I started the design of my next generation model roller coaster nearly two years ago with the idea to build a 3D printed model roller coaster as opposed to using the connects that I had been using in my previous versions. I started in No Limits 2 roller coaster design software where I created a custom friction profile based off of testing data from CDX Blocks trains. CDX Blocks is a LEGO compatible roller coaster model kit produced by Coaster Dynamics and is used for the track and trains of the model. No Limits 2 allowed me to design the layout simulate a train passing through the course, and even take a ride on the model prior to the first part being printed. Once I knew everything worked, I exported the data from No Limits 2, which contained three lines. These three lines dictate the center of the train and left and right rails of the track. This data was imported into Autodesk Fusion 360, where I designed all of the track components and support pieces. The track is made up of 3D printed spine with CDX box track glued to the surface. Specialized 3D printed mounts were developed to ensure the quality of each track piece. All of these components were then 3D printed over the period of about three months. It was right about here that COVID-19 hit and threw a massive list of challenges into my project that I was going to have to find solutions to. And one of the biggest of these challenges was actually the baseboard of the model. Due to the fact that the model is designed on the computer, it has extremely tight tolerances for how the parts fit together. This meant that where the holes were drilled for the supports on the baseboard was absolutely critical. Originally, I was going to use a CNC machine to drill these holes with a high level of precision. However, due to the pandemic, I no longer had access to the machine I was planning to use. So I engineered a solution that required me to print off sheets of paper and lay them out in a grid, which created a full scale, dimensionally accurate drawing of where the holes needed to be drilled. I then hand drilled the hundreds of holes that the 3D printed parts would bolt into. The completed model stands about 44 inches tall top to bottom and is designed to fit through standard commercial doorways that comply with the international building code. This was actually a big constraint on the project because we knew we would have to move the project in and out of facilities across the US with relative ease. To ensure the model roller coaster had as realistic a ride control system as possible, I knew I had to use the same components that are used on real ride control systems. Rockwell Automation is one of the leading providers of components for control systems in the amusement industry. And through my co-op experiences at both eTechnologies Group and Walt Disney Imagineering, I was able to gain a lot of experience with their equipment. Rockwell Automation graciously donated all the equipment you see behind me on the electrical system. The electrical system of a roller coaster is kind of like a nervous system. It has sensors to see the world. It has a brain to process what those sensors are seeing and then decide to, what to do with it. And then it has motors to affect what's actually going on in the world. The sensors for the model roller coaster are called inductive proximity sensors. 
This means that they can only detect metallic objects. This is perfect for my model because everything except for the metallic tape on the trains is made from plastic. So only this metallic tape can be detected by the sensors. Several sensors are also strategically placed to ensure components are operating within their design parameters. This allows the control system to detect faulty components and stop everything before the faulty component can pose a safety risk to anyone in the ride area. A GuardLogic's L81ES Safety Programmable Logic Controller, or PLC, acts as the brain of the operation. Right next door is its safety partner, which adds another level of redundancy to the system. Redundancy is a super important topic when it comes to theme park rides, because in any system, components wear out and fail over time. It is important to have something else in the system that can take up the slack of the failed component so everything can come to a safe stop and a maintenance technician can replace the faulty part. Finally, several 9 volt hobby motors propel the trains around the track. The motors were actually one of the biggest challenges with this project as it is not possible to purchase variable frequency drives, or VFDs, that can both connect to the PLC and drive the motors. So, I had to build my own VFD. I decided to design a piece of software that allows an Arduino microcontroller to communicate with the PLC through the Ride Control System's Ethernet network. The PLC sends motor speed commands to the Arduino via the Ethernet communication software. The Arduino then interprets this data and sends out low voltage pulse width modulation signals to the motor drivers, which in turn outputs the 9 volt signals that the motors need to run. Now that we know a little bit more about the electrical system, we can get into how to actually run the ride. First things first, let's take a look at a full cycle of the roller coaster. To make the roller coaster go, I press down on the green flashing dispatch button to tell the system that the train is ready to go. This button must be held down to enable motion in the station block zone. As you can see, the train makes a 180 degree turn out of the station, crosses over a track switch, and begins to climb the lift hill. The roller coaster climbs 37 inches above the tabletop, facing 90 degrees straight up. The roller coaster then crests the lift and dives down in an 87 degree angle. The train then flips upside down through an element known as a dive loop. The train then climbs and banks to the right as it traverses an overbank turn. The train then accelerates downward and quickly transitions from a right turn to a wide left turn. After approximately 2.7 seconds of runtime, the trains come into the adaptive speed brake run. The brake run can recognize the speed of the train and adapt the braking profile to ensure that a smooth deceleration is applied to each train. The train then advances to the ready brake, and when I push and hold the dispatch button once again, the train advances into the station, and that completes one cycle. So, one of the big benefits of having a control system on roller coasters is that you can run multiple trains safely. The system does this by dividing the course into zones called block zones. The idea is that only one train can be in a block zone at any given time. This is how a ride control system is able to keep safe separation of the trains. The model roller coaster has a total of five main circuit block zones and three storage block zones. Just like a real roller coaster it is programmed to ensure that there is only ever one train in the block zone at a time. For example, if a train is stuck on the brake run and another train is climbing the lift hill, the train climbing the lift hill will climb up as far as the system considers it safe to do so and stops before going over into the next block zone that is currently being occupied by the train in the brake zone. This ensures that it is impossible for the train on the lift hill to come flying into the brake run and crash into the train currently sitting on the brakes. So I know what you're saying right now, Jared, wait, hold up. How did you get the second train on the track? Well, that's what the track switch is for. Up to three trains can be stored off the track in the storage track segment. These trains can then be brought on using the track switch when the ride system is in transfer mode. The system is also capable of tracking each train as it goes through the course. For preventative maintenance purposes, the ride system logs how many cycles the train has run total as well as more detailed data about the last 50 cycles the train has run. By analyzing this data, we can see how well each train is performing on the track and predict if one will experience a problem soon. So what happens when the roller coaster does experience an issue? Well, just like the real thing, a fault occurs. 
Depending on the severity of the problem, the ride will be automatically put into a safe mode that may involve stopping all motion. We can see this when I trigger a sensor when the ride control system is not expecting it to be triggered. As you can see, this causes a fault and stops all ride motion until maintenance personnel can have the opportunity to take a look at the issue. This same concept can be seen when I pull a wire out of this brake actuator. When the wire is pulled out of the brake actuator, it becomes disabled. When the ride control system requests it to open, it is unable to do so, and the system reacts to this by putting the roller coaster into a safe stop state. To bring the roller coaster out of the safe stop state, maintenance personnel must remedy the issue and then press the blue acknowledge push button. If the issue is not remedied, the fault will not be cleared from the system. This is just a couple examples of the hundreds of faults the model is capable of detecting. There are three different fault severities designed into the model's control system. The first is minor, which only disables the ability for the next train to leave the station. However, the rest of the main course is still allowed to operate normally. This would be used on faults that certainly need attention, but do not immediately affect the ride's operation. The idea in keeping the rest of the blocks operational is to bring the riders as close to the station as possible in case an evacuation is necessary. By having the trains closer to the station, an evacuation will be far easier. The second fault type is a major recoverable fault. Major recoverable faults cause a full ride stop, but are able to be reset without a maintenance key. This is used on faults where the system identifies an issue that it is not sure about and requires a stop, but the error does not pose an immediate safety risk. A human operator acknowledges this fault by pressing the acknowledge push button, and therefore both the system and the human agree that the fault is remedied. The last type of fault is major faults. These kinds of faults are reserved for more serious issues that require a maintenance technician with higher training to fix. Each of the several hundred faults that were programmed into the model were analyzed based on a risk assessment to ensure that the proper fault severity was assigned to it. Clearly the model is quite complex and it does its best to emulate exactly how a real roller coaster would work. However, this version of the software may not be as good for situations where you're putting the model in a museum and you're not going to have someone like me standing next to it to explain how to run it and what is going on with it. For this condition, I developed Unsupervised Show Mode or USM. USM automates a lot of the features on the model roller coaster, including automatically sending trains at regular intervals and demonstrating the transfer track section. The ride system also takes a different look at faults and tries to keep the roller coaster running for as long as possible. An example of this is if a train takes too long to go around the course in unsupervised show mode, it will be automatically taken off and placed in the storage track, allowing the other two trains to continue to operate normally. The ride control system also takes into account the mechanical wear of the trains and automatically schedules them to be taken off for rest periods. This helps ensure that the trains get even wear over long periods of operation. The model is also far more user-friendly for people who know practically nothing about roller coasters. One of these examples is that it only takes a momentary press of the dispatch push button to get the train to fully advance. This is opposed to the requirement to hold the push button down to allow the train to advance. All in all, I think unsupervised show mode is a great feature that many venues using the model in the future will take advantage of. This video has only gone over a brief summary of some of the major features of the model roller coaster. Um, and there are a lot more small features that just couldn't make the cut. So I've put together a one hour and 42 minute video, links in the description, uh, that you can go and take a look at. Uh, it is split up using YouTube's chapters feature, so you can go ahead and scroll through the video and look at just the features that interest you. The future of the model roller coaster is very bright. The model roller coaster is already scheduled to take a trip to Cleveland to the Great Lakes Science Center here in June and be a part of their summer camps. The University of Cincinnati is also working on ways to implement the roller coaster in different ways around campus. 
I am so excited to see what the University of Cincinnati, Rockwell Automation, and the Great Lakes Science Center do with the model roller coaster in the future. Of course, it's definitely going to be hard to let this thing go. I've poured so much of my time, energy, and passion into building this thing, and it has been so much fun to put together. I cannot even tell you how much fun it has been to put this thing together. Um, Anyway, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, check out the link to the full demo video in the description and uh, keep an eye on my YouTube channel in the future because you never know, you might see something even cooler than this pop up.